This is the second video on decomposing a number into prime factors or making a factor tree. So in the first video, we looked at uh, what do we do for simple factor trees with double digits. We use the example of 36. And like I said, you can do um, this with any uh, composite number. Uh, some factor trees will be larger than others. And also factor trees exist uh, that are different uh, for the same numbers. But as long as you get the same prime factorization at the end with every single one of those trees for the same number, um, then you did it correctly. So now we're going to look at what do we do when we have larger numbers. It works exactly the same way, but a little word of advice, please keep yourself organized and neat. And if you need to use a ruler, whatever helps you and uh, write small, not too small, so you can see what you're doing and do not squeeze in all your answers uh, so that you can spread it out uh, a little bit to make sure you see what you're actually doing. Okay, so let's start off with the example of 320 this time. Okay, so we're starting off with the number written at the top. This is the number I want to decompose and find it, its prime factorization. And again, um, so many different options, right? You can pick um, whatever factors you like. It really doesn't matter. It will end up being the same thing but uh, make your life easier, right? Pick numbers that are easy to work with. So what do you think is the easiest one that we can use for this, especially given that this number ends with a zero? Yeah, times 10, there you go. Okay, so 32 times 10, right? That's what we're gonna start with. So let's break this down. 32 times 10. So yes, I'm going to leave that in there uh, for now. Uh, just be careful um, if we're going to end up using it. Uh, make a decision at the beginning. So if you want to keep your multiplication in there, um, then leave it in there and leave it in there throughout. If you do not want to put it in there, then do not put it in there. Don't go back and forth. Um, of course, if your teacher wants you to use it, then please huh, do so. Listen to that. Very important. So we're gonna keep going here. So uh, we're gonna think about different factors that could be uh, used to decompose each of these numbers. We'll start over here with 32. We're gonna use eight times four. Then bring it over here for 10. How about two times five? Okay. Now, remember, we're also going to bring down uh, the multiplication symbol that is uh, up here. Uh, we're going to bring it down each time just so we don't forget it as we're decomposing because we are going to need it in the end. Okay, so just make sure that comes down uh, with it. Do not make any arrows or anything like that. Again, why add more things that are necessary? Um, there's really no point. So let's keep it neat. Okay, so again, make sure that every time you decompose, it is going to stay on the same line so you don't get too uh, far away from the number that you're working with. So my 32 times 10 is on the same line. And then when I decompose 32 and 10, it's all on the same line to keep myself neat and organized. Okay, and I'm going to look what the numbers that I have here. I have an 8, 4, a 2, and a 5. Um, and ask yourself, what are the numbers I can decompose and which ones are my prime numbers? Well, my two and my five are prime numbers, so I uh, will not be decomposing them, but we'll get back to them in just a second. I can decompose my eight and my four, so I'm gonna start with that. So eight, I could do four times two. Um, it also doesn't matter uh, where you put uh, the factors. So for example, if I wanted to do two times four, it will still end up being the same way. So you don't have to worry about uh, what number to put there first. So eight uh, is four times two. Okay, then I'm going to decompose the four. Be careful here because we get it's a little squishy and I do have a fat marker. So that might make it a little bit more difficult for me to keep it neat as I possibly can. But hopefully you're doing this in pencil. So uh, again, try to keep it very, very neat and uh, loose leaf or graph paper really does help a lot because you can keep everything on the same line. Okay, so decomposing my four two times two. Again, bringing down that multiplication there. Be careful. Okay. Still going to keep it on the same line though to make sure I am going to end up getting uh, some of my space back over here. So it will be okay. So come over here, bring down this multiplication. 
Okay, so here I am at my uh, prime numbers over here that no, I'm not going to decompose anymore, but I do have to bring them down to be on the same line as my other branches over here. And the reason I do this is I really don't want to forget about them. So the larger the number is of up here at the top, of course, there's going to be uh, more branches, right? So you really want to be careful to make sure that you don't forget anything. So I don't want to forget my two and my five here. So I'm just going to bring it down. I know I'm not going to decompose it, just bring it down to make sure I don't forget it. So here's my two, bring it down again, and there's my five, bringing that one down, and of course I don't want to forget my multiplication symbol. Okay, so we're looking at all of these numbers again. I got lots of twos here, a five, but then there's a four. And yes, that is a composite number, so I do have to decompose it again. See, it gets a lot bigger as you go. So decomposing my four, yes, I know it's two times two. Okay, so I know that all these twos are my prime numbers here, including this five, but again, I still have to bring it down to show that I completed the factor tree properly, okay? And again, bringing it down uh, so I don't forget anything. Okay, so I'm gonna go in order so I don't forget. So here's my multiplication here for the four, that's good. Bringing down this multiplication symbol up here. There's a two here, the multiplication symbol, another two, multiplication symbol, another two, multiplication symbol, another two, multiplication symbol, and another five. Wow. Okay, let's make sure I didn't forget any here. I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and there's the two from the four times four. I'm good. It's always good to go back and check to make sure you didn't forget anything. This is really, really important. Okay, so I cannot leave it like this, of course, but my uh, factor tree is complete, but my answer is not. So uh, in questions that ask for the prime factorization of the number, um, you have to go back and give a nice clear answer, okay? So I'm gonna go over here. 320 equals, all right, now again, when you have a uh, number that's being repeated, we're gonna put it in exponential uh, notation, okay? So the question is, how many twos do we actually have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have a six, so we have two to the power of six. Okay, and then we have our five left over here. So again, I'm making sure that uh, my answer is in increasing order, meaning that I'm taking the smallest number that appears first and writing that one first, and then uh, the rest of it like that. So um, if uh, you did it correctly, if you use your calculator and you uh, type in uh, two times two times two times two times two times two times five, it should give you uh, 320. Or uh, if you have your scientific calculator, you can also check with exponential notation, uh, two to the power of six times five equals 320. And that is 320 uh, using prime factorization and factor trees.